Happy holidays, everyone. Today we're going to diverge a little bit from our typical subject matter and we're going to look at a conical burr grinder for grinding coffees and the show starts now. Well, I'm going to add this in ahead of the main event and this is the old coffee grinder from the good old days. It is of a Krups brand, although I've had it greeked out because I don't use it for a coffee grinder because it's not very good. It's a blade type and I thought it was a brawn for the last probably 40 years, 30, 35 years and that's an accurate account of how old this is. It's just a blade grinder and it will grind up coffee beans no doubt but there is no consistency in the grind and it's all controlled by how long you hold the little top down and as you can see it's worse for the wear. Uh, it's still around after all these years. I think it was the 80s that I tried my hand at espresso and didn't have really good results because I didn't have a very good coffee grinder and, and the machine itself was pretty poor. But this has been super glued together. It's got a chunk out of it somewhere. But what I've been using this for is a spice grinder in my sausage making videos. And I have actually used a food processor to do bigger batches of coffee on the rare occasion when I messed up and got whole bean coffee without a decent grinder and this works the same way basically it's a blade a blender anything like that will work the problem with those type of things are they're not accurate in their grind and if you're trying to do something uh, you get a great deal of inconsistency now i did look at walmart.com for a current version of something that had that same brand name on it and uh, they were about 30 35 dollars uh, so that's um, a price point and they don't function very well, but I can, of course, and I keep this up in the spice cabinet, and I use it for that purpose, and I have for many, many years. Today, we're going to look at a coffee grinder that I think is much better for consistency. It's new. I don't know how well it holds up, but here's the box. It is this uh, Shardor brand. Their little br the model number is two-year guarantee. The box is all in English. The device is in English. Of course, it has the uh, Arabic numerals in it. Now, this is, uh, I'm not really sure why this is here, but it does have a features in multiple languages, although the box is clearly English. Everything else on the entire box is in English. So, as far as boxes go, retail box is a pretty nice little box, I guess. But it, it protected during shipping. And we'll look at this grinder and what I like about it. And if you're in the market for a grinder, Maybe this one is a good one for you. It retailed on Amazon for about uh, $59, well, $60 rounded up. You know how they always take a penny or so off just to make it under 60 But uh, we'll look at that right now. Now, this is pretty much it. In the package, you'll get some destructions to tell you how to use this. Comes with a little broom to do some sweepings. And what we have here, of course, is a bin. I think most of these come with a bin. I don't use the bin because I weigh mine. The timer is not very accurate. I mean, it's accurate as far as time goes, but the grind is never quite spot on. I don't think any of them will be unless, of course, you have a set of scales that are tied to the grinding and it grinds to actual weight versus time, which is different even than volume because we get some dip. So I don't really use this. I have a little baby scale that I put up under here. Typical type of porta filter. And these come with it. Here's the larger one. This is for 58 and it's too big all right because this is a 54 and this in is for if i can get my fingers through the <laughs> without the depth perception this is a 51 it's a little bit too small but it fits here and as you can see it, it's wobbly it's a 54 so 58 and 51 are probably pretty common these are just little plastic cheap plastic funnels but they do they do what you would expect a funnel to do now this may be a bit goofy, but the thing that, that attracted me to this particular grinder, as simple as it is, is this feature here. It has a rather large rubber grommet that acts sort of like a bellows, like a fireplace bellows, and it just fits on top. You don't have to have this, but I leave it on here because when I put the top on at the end of a grind, if I want to, I can pump air through it and it actually helps keep the mechanism inside the burr grinder actually cleaner and it'll spit a little bit of material out at the bottom. You see the inside of the burr grinder. Now when you, if you're not familiar with how a lot of these work, when you turn this mechanism, which is 
the grind to the anti-clockwise side it goes down the actual grinder mechanism drops down and so it allows for the beans bigger pieces to go through and if you turn it clockwise you get toward these lower numbers and it brings the system up now here I have the section out of it see at the bottom that real very fine tooth that's that part that makes it go all the way down to powder if we get that far down the big part obviously break up the big pieces and this goes in here just drops in turns in locks on the bayonet and you fold a little handle down i don't think it matters to go left or right doesn't seem to make any difference but by raising this up or dropping it down the pieces get small it's not that more complicated now for my espresso baskets i find that i've yet to get anything actually in the espresso range that won't clog the portafilter, the actual basket plugs up. So I may need a something new, and I actually have something coming in, hopefully, uh, next week that will allow me to have maybe a little bit more uh, volume flow through there, and I can actually get a smaller grind out of it. I won't know till I get there, but that's how that works. You have this little release here on the side. I'll turn it around. And you see it has a lock and unlock. It locks in the up position, and you have to push this down to release the bin the bin i can't do this one-handed but the bin itself just then goes on top and we line up just just like you would lock so many other things you you would uh put it in here and get it to set down starting with the unlock and twist and i don't know if i can get it yes yeah, too much friction i'll have to have two hands to turn it further clockwise until we hear it click and the little lever pops up with the bin installed we can see that it has uh, basically a, a distribution cone around it which helps the beans fall inside uh, they don't always grind all the way and uh, even when it stops spitting stuff out sometime we have a little piece hung up it's not a big deal but you can pour the the uh, coffee i have a little bowl here now you probably thought i spilled those beans pun intended spilled beans on purpose but here's something that i have it unlocked you can actually take that off and see them sitting in there because at the bottom of the unit it has some little shutters and the little shutters will allow you to take the uh, a full bin off and replace and actually dump the beans back into the container or the bag or whatever i have a bag these came out of that bag right there no plug intended but uh, yeah you can pull this off you may have to then dump the uh, ones that are in the grinder back in the bag separately but the grinder is not real heavy so that's a nice little feature i don't know that all of them have that some i'm told that if you take the bin off they just fall straight through because there's nothing to stop it it's just a cup with a hole in the bottom with little bayonets or whatever we have to lock the bin on Hey, appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, if you will, subscribe to the channel, either the YouTube or the Rumble channel, which this appears in. And if you can, check the notification bell or settings to make sure that you get notified when new videos are posted. Appreciate it. Now, in most cases, I've been using this, where I take just a uh, ramekin, a small ramekin, and I'll take my little baby set of scales. I'm sure they're not trade accurate, but they're going to be, I think, fairly repeatable for the time I use it and of course you can come up here and and turn the button on it's a little hard to press and see so you get a timer it's in seconds that's not weight or anything like that and you go up or down and if it gets down low enough it starts to go to the tenth of a second so to speak i don't know what's special about 10 seconds but that's the default settings and then you just push the little button Now we got nine and a half grams out of a 10 second burst, but remember the unit itself was clean because I've had it apart. Now if we take it and we push, we should get a little bit more out of it from blowing the residual in there. And now we've got a perfect 10 grams of coffee with that setting on da -da -da, the bar. The lighting is not ideal, but you can see it's right at the bar before espresso. Pretty easy to operate. Again, you might want to either, if you're, if you're a measure by volume, you'll get a dirty grinder if you don't change the setting to be fairly repeatable, you know, within reason. But uh, it's just not rocket science. But uh, what I liked was that little puffer top on it to uh, help clean out. And sometimes if you're just a cat's hair shy, you can just go ahead and give it a little push and see if you can't get a little bit more out of it by moving the dust.
Of course, it won't be there next time when you do a grind. At this point, I have no idea if six and a half seconds at this setting will give me the rest I need down here to be 19 grams, but we're going to do it anyway just to show you that you can add a little bit more. You can always spoon out a little bit if it's not quite accurate enough for you. Missed it by a gram and a half. 